Good morning. I'm Ron Alcorn. The Congregation of Zion Lutheran Church in downtown Hamilton, Ohio, welcomes you to our Sunday worship service. We're happy you have joined us in praise and worship of our Heavenly Father. We're broadcasting live on Sundays at 10 a.m. through Facebook and Radio WMOH on 1450 a.m. dial. Both can easily be accessed through our zionhamilton.org website. If you'd like to follow our service for our Sunday bulletin, please call our church office at 513-863-5774 or email us at zionlutheranoffice at gmail.com and we'll put you on our weekly email distribution. As we enter this week of Thanksgiving, may we thank our Lord for the many blessings we received, especially for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For the service today, the first lesson is taken from Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 1 through 6. We'll then read responsibly Psalm 46. The second lesson is taken from Colossians chapter 1, verses 11 through 20. And the gospel lesson is taken from Luke chapter 23, verses 33 through 43. Today's worship is led by Carmen Colin Brown, organist Bill Seal, and lector Justin Beers. We now return to our worship service. you are able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. And to know you is unending joy. We worship you. We glorify you. We give thanks to you for your great glory. Abide with us, reign in us, and make this world into a fit habitation for your divine majesty. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This past Thursday evening, several of us from Zion went to the opening of the new YWCA building in Fairfield. I don't know if you noticed on your way in, in, in the Great Hall, this will be on the pedestal there. It talks about, I, I love the symbolism, it talks about the old building and then there's a bridge, which is a, a family tree, going to the new building. And what their tagline is, celebrating our past, inspiring our future which I would love to use that tagline for Zion because we're coming up on our 180th year. So we should be celebrating our past and inspiring our future. What they also gave us, it was attached here, but it fell off. It's a Christmas ornament, and it has that YWCA Hamilton 1570 Grand Boulevard, 
22, because that's when they're actually moving their first resident in. And it's a, a, um, a Christmas ornament to go on the Christmas tree. So I was so proud of Zion, and I thank everyone who donated to the fund. We raised more than $10,000. So we were able to pay for two rooms of furniture. The rooms are fabulous if you ever get a chance to go over there. And with the extra money, we're putting together well gift baskets so when the residents come into their room, there will be a gift basket there for them. So again, I thank you all for your donations and God bless. Just a little bit taller than Patty. Sorry. Can you hear me good? Yeah. yeah. All right. The first lesson today is taken from the 23rd chapter of Jeremiah. <clears throat> Today's reading builds on the common ancient Near Eastern metaphor of the kings as shepherd. Judah's, un Judah's unjust rulers have caused their people, their flock, to be scattered. Nevertheless, God will raise up a new righteous shepherd who will rule or restore Judah. And now the reading. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people. It is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then, I'm, then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I've driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king deal and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which all will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We will now read responsively Psalm 46, which is found in your bulletin. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth be moved. And though the mountains shake in the depths of the sea. Though its water ra waters rage and foam. And though the mountains tremble with tumult, There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. The holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be shaken. God shall help it at the break of the day. The nations rage and the kingdoms shake. God speaks and the earth melts away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come now, regard the works of the Lord. What desolation God has wrought upon the earth. Behold the one who makes war to cease in all the world. Who breaks the bow and shatters the spear and then burns the shields with fire. Be still, then, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. The second lesson is taken from the first chapter of Colossians. An early Christian hymn praises the mystery of the political, personal, and mystical Christ, the one who was present at creation and is eternally reigning with God. And now the second reading. May ye be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power, and may ye be prepared to endure everything with patience, while joyfully giving thanks to the Father, who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transfers, transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. 
He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he may, might come to have f- first place in everything. For in him, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him, God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We stand. Gospel according to St. Luke, the 23rd chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Amid scoffing and slander from those who sarcastically call him Messiah and King, Jesus reveals that to be Messiah and King is to give one's life for others. Here he uses his power to welcome a despised sinner to paradise but puts his own death into God's hands. The gospel begins. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing And the people stood by, watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there but deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him saying, Do you not fear God since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly for we are getting what we deserve for our needs. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. The gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. And if the children will come up. First one. You can get closer to me if you want. <laughs> there we go. Oh, I like your I like those crowns. Wow. That's fantastic. Okay. So you guys are gonna actually help me. Are you all right? It's very simple instructions. Very easy. I'm going to tell you the story about a backward king, and I need your help. So when I point at you in the story, so whenever I go like this, you're going to say, that's backward. Okay? You want to practice? So I'm going to point, and you're going to say? That's backward. Well, all of you need to say it. Okay. (laughs) One, two, three. Beautiful, and they need help. Very good, okay. A long time ago, there lived a king. He was no ordinary king. He was a backward king. 
He was different from other kings because he did everything backward from the way other kings did them. From the very day he was born, you could tell that this king was going to be different. Most kings are usually born in a palace, but this king was born in a stable surrounded by donkeys, sheep, and cows. Very good. It wasn't a very big beginning for a king. In fact, very few people even knew that a king had been born. Only a handful of shepherds and three wise men got the word that a king had been born. That's backwards. Back, backwards. As the infant king grew into a man, he continued to be different from other kings. While most kings spent all their time building up riches of silver, gold, and jewels, this king owned nothing at all. And while most kings surrounded themselves with servants, he chose to be a servant. He could often be found helping others. As time went on, people became very unhappy with their king because he just didn't act the way they thought a king should act. Instead of riding into a town on a big white horse, the way other kings usually did, their king rode into town on the back of a donkey. Was that any way for a king to act? That's bad. And the people, he chose to be his friends. His closest friends were a bunch of smelly fishermen. And he could often be seen visiting with the poor and eating with people who sin. Finally, the people decided they had enough of this king. If he couldn't act the way a king should act, then they didn't want him to be their king anymore. They made a plan to have him arrested and thrown in jail. That's well, their plan worked. When the day came for him to be judged, this king stood before the people. Instead of shouting, hail to the king, long live the king, the people shouted, crucify him. He is not our king, crucify him. So they crucified the king. They nailed him to a cross. They put a crown made of thorns on his head. They poked him with sharp sticks and made fun of him. What a way for a king to die. After he was crucified, they took his body and put it in a borrowed tomb. That's backwards. Wait a minute. That's not the end of the story. Remember, this backward king was different. This king rose from his grave to live forever. Now, instead of being the backward king, he is the forever king. king. Very good. He is the king to anyone who chooses him to be their king. There are still some people who call him king backward, but those who know him don't call him that. We call him... Jesus, Christ the King. Now let's say a prayer, and I ask the adults to help us. Repeat after me. Dear Jesus, Jesus, today we crown you you, King and Lord of our life. In Jesus' name we say, Amen. And I have something for you guys. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's a backwards puzzle. <laughs> there you go. That's kind of funny. It's not. There you go. There we go. Uh, there you go. You're welcome. And there you go.
So before I begin my sermon, I have to say one thing. I have to say I enjoy the music so very much. Our congregation, Vida Eterna, does not have a musician. So I kind of have to lead certain songs, and I don't sing, and I don't read music. So it's by memory. So thank you for your talents. Thank you so very much. We pray in our hearts. May the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our Redeemer. And I will need what just fell down. If anyone can get that for me. I enjoy using props for... Thank you, sir. Uh, for my sermons. Uh, it helps my congregation understand uh, things a little better. Um, especially since they're not used to Anglo culture. So I do have props, and I apologize to those listening and watching. Um, I will try to describe my little props as we go along. Today is Christ the King Sunday. When I made that announcement, what image of Christ came to your mind? Many times... The immediate image is Jesus as an adult with his apostles walking, healing, and teaching. As well, many people imagine Jesus in the image of their ethnicity or race. There's a beautiful poster of the different faces of Jesus that Pastor Lowell has on his office door. It's very beautiful. My first image of Jesus was the image of a child, not a baby. I was raised in the Catholic faith, so statues were an important aspect of our family's faith life. So my faith formation can be followed by the way I interpreted the many statues and images of Christ. As a young child, I had a very fancy statue of Jesus in my room. It was beautiful. I was rather young and very impressed with its royalty. It had a red cape with a lot of gold trim. And if you can ha love a statue, well, I loved this statue. Here is a picture of the statue. I made it as big as I could, but it is... Believe it or not, and I'm Puerto Rican, so I don't know how my mother got the statue for me. It's the infant Jesus of Prague. That's how they see the infant Jesus. He doesn't look like an infant, though. And you see he has a very royal crown. So with that royal crown, I imagined Jesus as a prince. He was royalty. He wouldn't have anything to do with me. The next image I remember was that of the Virgin Mary holding the baby Jesus. Here's another photo. It's a typical photo you see in many churches. But in this one, Jesus has a halo. This is when I first realized Jesus was holy. Because, you know, anything that has a halo around its head is, you know, like an angel. When I approached confirmation age, the image introduced to me was that of Jesus laying across his mother's lap. He was dead. And I cried. It is with this image... I realized Jesus was human. Here's a photo. It's Michelangelo's Pieta. It's the sculpture uh, made of marble that's located right now at St. Peter, Peter's Basilica in Vatican City. But there are many little statues of this all around. The last image I had of Jesus 
before I stopped practicing, practicing Catholicism was that of Jesus hung on the cross. The image always included Jesus with a crown of thorns, blood at his side, and on his hands and on his feet. It is with this image I realized Jesus' suffering, the ridicule, ridicule and the torture he suffered. For the first time, I contemplated the weight and the pain of sin. In most Puerto Rican families, at least with all my relatives, you would find this cross inside the house above the entrance doors. This is a photo of a similar cross. And you notice his face is down. Of course, it's the crucifixion of Christ. At this point, you might wonder, why am I talking about the varied images of, a, of Christ? And you may wonder why the gospel selected for this day is that of Jesus suffering on the cross. It is difficult to imagine Christ as king when he's nailed to a cross and bleeding. But think about it. Isn't this the type of suffering, the responsibility of a king to care for his people, to carry their burdens, to give them life? I would answer yes. But when I think of a king, I also imagine the conflicts of politics. An example would be the events occurring in Great Britain. Since his mother's death, King Charles and the politics of Great Britain have been a hot topic. So it is rather difficult to combine the image of Jesus as a king with politics. When most see an image of Christ, they associate his life with faith, not politics. And many would say faith is deeply personal and thus has no place in politics. But a well-known person wrote, the personal is political. Jesus, who is the center of our faith, would agree. Everything Jesus did, the disciples he chose, the people he healed, fed, and involved in dialogue, dialogue were acts of redistributing resources and status. Jesus was unapologetic about his politics. On the cross, he publicly forgives his accusers and executioners, saying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And he pardons the thief crucified beside him, saying, Today you will be with me in paradise. In God's political economy, which Jesus embodied throughout his life, there are no sides. In God's political economy, there is no concern with upholding power, which draws lines between people. In God's political economy, the undeserving, the least of these, the poor and the disenfranchised are forgiven and redeemed. In God's political economy, those we would leave out are welcomed and loved. Jesus moves them from the margins of life to the center of life through radical love, hospitality, and inclusion. And though the Roman soldiers thought they were mocking him by calling him king, Jesus' actions contrary, backward, to the way of kings, the way kings of his day ruled, made him a true king. Though Jesus is no longer physically with us, we carry on God's politics when we do as Jesus did, mirroring his life and seeking the reign of God here and now. Our faith is always deeply political. It reflects our values 
and our values guide our actions in the world. Christ is our king, and in his kingdom there is no hierarchy. All are welcomed and transformed. This is a true image of Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Let us end with prayer. And in this prayer, I say gracias. And when I say gracias, I want you to say gracias. Do you know what gracias means? Oh, very good. Spanish 101. So this time when I point, you're all going to say gracias. Okay? Lord, for being a different kind of king. For your goodness and kindness in our lives. For your generosity. For loving us unconditionally. And we even, and we even say, for your politics. For your kingdom that is unlike any other. Amen. Please stand. our faith. I believe in God, God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and then born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Kneel as you are able.
United with your saints across time and place, we pray for our shared world. We pray for your church, emboldened denominations and faith-based organizations in creative and collaborative ministries, and increase our work for the sake of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. We pray for the earth, protect waterways from pollution and animal habitats from destruction. Guide us in careful stewardship of waters, plant life, and animals. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. We pray for the nations of the world, instill in every leader's heart a desire for justice and peace. Support the work of international and local collaborations that seek the goals of health and joy for all people, especially Christ the King Lutheran Church in Westchester and their pastor, Matthew Bird, and St. Joseph Catholic Church and their pastor, Richard Walling. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for all who are undermined or oppressed amplify the voices of the unheard and break open stubborn systems of injustice bring about your righteousness and fill us all with your redeeming light lord in your mercy receive our prayer we pray for this assembly guide our pastors deacons and council members in discernment and nurture new leaders with fresh ideas. Give this congregation a spirit of discipleship and service. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Healing God, your people cry out to you. Sustain doctors, nurses, and hospital personnel in their tireless work. Uphold mental health professionals and those in their care. May the sun of righteousness rise on all who are sick, especially Pastor Lisa Bernheisel, Maggie Bryce, Doug Edwards and family, Jim Gronberg, Ida, Ginny, Lorna, Joe Hanghold, Libby Bryce, Jan Butch Height, Pastor Mark Finfrock, Joe Hanghold, Jean Chloe Kim, Wanda Melford, Elisa Hanghold, Bob Campbell, Donna Wolf, Joyce Donner, Mel Webster, Cash Ramsey, Missy Muller, Rob Green, and Tom Wright. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Loving God, accompany all who make sacrifices for the sake of others. Safeguard first responders and active duty military personnel, including Captain Andrew Kopas. Grant peace to veterans and heal any wounds in body, mind, or spirit. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. We give thanks for all who have died in faith. Console us who mourn and comfort us with the beautiful promise of life in your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Accept these prayers, gracious God, and those known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you are able. <laughs> the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please share the peace in whatever way is comfortable to you.
us pray. Blessed are you, maker of all things, that you have entrusted us with all that you have created. Now gather our gifts, nourish us with this sacrament, and send us to those who hunger and thirst for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> sovereign, our wisdom, and our judge. We praise you for Christ, who proclaimed your reign of peace and promised an end to injustice and harm. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. And gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, the sacrifice of his life and death and the victory of his resurrection, we await with all the saints his loving redemption of our suffering world. Send your spirit on these gifts of bread and wine and on all who share in the body and blood of your Son. Teach us your mercy and justice and make all things new in Christ. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. United by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever and ever. Amen. Christ spreads a table before you, Gather here with all the saints.
the body of Christ given.
stand as you are able. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Gracious God, that you have fed us with the bread of heaven and given us a foretaste of paradise. Enliven us to be your body in the world and to serve those who are in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The God of peace, who creates all things and calls them good, who makes us alive in Jesus, and who breathes on us the spirit of hope. Bless you now and forever. Amen. in this world. Reaching out to God's love. Amen. 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 Amen.